In this episode of Basic Hail, we show how cycling could literally snuff out your breath. But not to worry, we will also show you how to prevent that from happening. Cycling, the answer to many human problems. It is an important part of the solution to climate change. It is also good for your heart health and kind to your pocket. But unfortunately, every action, even the good ones, have consequence. In the Northern Hemisphere, autumn has just arrived and winter is not far behind. They both bring with them a bit more rain, greater humidity and fog. The implication of these heavy conditions is that atmospheric dust also become heavier and fumes from automobile exhausts are trapped in water vapor such that they remain just above the ground for longer than they would if the weather wasn't so wet and humid. If you are a countryside dwelling cyclist, this has a slightly lesser significance for you because there are smaller quantities of dust being raised into the air that you breathe and there are very few cars around to spew out fumes from their combustion engines. Most of us, however, live in urban areas and most cyclists do too. There are leaf blowers, choo-choo trains, gas-guzzling sport utility vehicles, toxic industrial waste and many other things that transform the cyclic and beautiful seasonal transitions inherent in nature to an ugly nightmare for 21st century humans. And all of this ugliness is caused by you and me. To understand this better, let us take a shallow dive into particulate matter. Particulate matter are particles or things that are so small that they stay in the air for long periods of time before falling to the ground. This means that we are constantly inhaling particulate matter. Even worse, we are also constantly creating these lethal substances by just living our daily lives, doing things such as heating our homes with gas radiators in winter, driving to the supermarket and raising sheep on a farm. But the largest creator of particulate matter that can cause severe illness or death is that produced by petrol and diesel cars and industrial waste. To compound the situation even further, there is a multiplier effect of this man-made pollution in that they generate even more pollution by reacting with chemicals and gases in the air to create more particulate matter such as nitrates, sulfates and sulfuric acid, all of which can cause illness or death if you inhale them for extended periods of time. All particulate matter, including the ones that we can see, such as smoke and dust, are dangerous to health. History famously proved this with the London smog of 1952, where 4,000 people died in less than four days. Our saving grace is that human lungs have evolved to filter out larger particulate matter by a process called mucociliary transport. The first half of this word is derived from mucus, which is plentiful in your lungs, while the ciliary part refers to fine hairs on the inside of your lungs that moves constantly to sweep out particles towards the mouth so that you can either swallow them or spit them out. The unfortunate thing is that this mucociliary transport is not effective against very small particulate matter. This category of particulate matter are considered to be the most dangerous to human health. To put their size into perspective, consider a single strand of human hair with a diameter of 70 microns. The particulate matter that your mucociliary transport cannot eliminate from your body are those that are 2.5 microns in size or smaller. Another name for them is PM2.5. Once PM2.5 enters the nooks and crannies of your lungs, that is, the parts of your lungs called the alveoli, you cannot get them out. To avoid getting into an extended rant on climate change and the inertia of the conference of the parties, let us take a pause to remind ourselves that this episode of Basic Hail is about how to keep breathing as a cyclist. So, 
Let us look into the life of my friend, whom you would recall likes to cycle a lot, and he refused to take the heart doctor's prescription for chest pain in Basic Hill, Episode 3. As a cyclist, Vidal needs food plus air to breathe. Believe it or not, the more important of these two fuels is air to breathe. Although he has never tried it, Vidal knows that he could go cycling without eating at all and he could finish a 100-kilometer journey on his bicycle by just hydrating with water alone as he traveled. On the contrary, no human being can cycle more than five minutes without taking a breath. Yet, everything happening around Vidal is gravitating towards taking away his ability to breathe. When cycling, Vidal cannot control the air that he breathes, like a car driver and their passengers could. Most modern vehicles are fitted with air filtration devices. These devices filter the air available to the driver and passengers. Cyclists, on the other hand, do not have this luxury yet. About 75% of the population of Europe and North America live in urban areas. This implies that at least 75% of cyclists in these regions do their cycling in urban areas too and are frequently exposed to high concentration of particulate matter. The amount of air that we take into our lungs per minute is called minute ventilation, as vital cycles at very low speeds that bring his heart rate to about 100 beats per minute, his minute ventilation will increase to 25 liters per minute when he is cycling. This implies that he would inhale more than quadruple the amount of particulate matter compared to a passenger in a convertible car that traveled the same distance. As my friend Vidal continues to cycle, the PM2.5 that he inhales are permanently lodged in his lungs because they are too small for his mucociliary transport to flush them out. The more the quantity of PM2.5 that accumulates in Vida's lungs, the greater is the probability of developing heart disease, lung cancer, and worse still, he will almost certainly die from one of them. It appears that tiny PM2.5 is actually a mighty crusher of all the benefits that my friend was hoping to get from cycling. This is a truly grim picture, but it is not a suggestion for Vidal to stop cycling. So, what can Vidal do? How can he keep cycling to avail of all its benefits while at the same time minimizing the overwhelming disadvantage that is literally hanging in the air? The action required falls into two categories. The first category of action is individual actions. 1. Vidal needs to plan his cycling route to avoid busy car traffic. This is easily achievable with some knowledge of his locality and by using some route planning apps such as Komoot. Countries such as Holland and Denmark have extensive cycling routes and many other countries are developing urban planning measures to create cycling routes that protect cyclists from both physical and chemical hazards. Secondly, Vidal needs to check the air quality index of his locality before going out cycling. This information is freely available on local websites such as iqair.com in Europe and airnow in the US. The air quality rating on these websites are compared to the recommendations of the World Health Organization on safe air quality and they are updated every day. Vidal's way of using the daily air quality index in his local area is that on any given day, if the air quality is anything less than good, he will not cycle. Instead, he would use public transport. We realize that this strategy is unlikely to work for everyone, but still, knowing the air quality in your local area may help you to decide whether to cycle or not. The second category of action for Vidal is to band together with people in his community to advocate for the powers that be to take action on climate change. There are innumerable studies that show that reducing pollution makes people healthier and live longer.
To conclude, here is a tiny morsel of food for your thought. At the time of recording this episode of Basic Hail, our researcher was in the middle of a government-mandated 10-day isolation in his apartment following a positive COVID-19 test. This happened despite being fully vaccinated four months earlier. But more importantly, COVID-19 had killed more than 5 million people in the 22-month period that began in January 2020. But the positive side of the COVID saga is that the people of the world have fought together by wielding a huge quantum of human and financial resources to produce multiple vaccines in quick time and other solutions to stem the tide of death caused by COVID-19. However, would it surprise you to know that more than 4 million people die every year from particulate matter pollution, yet you probably have never heard of PM 2.5 until you watched this video. My friend Vidal thinks that the reason why you have never heard of PM 2.5 is because most big corporations and most governments cannot see any immediate financial gains to flexing their muscles on reducing pollution and tackling climate change. Thank you for watching. If you have ideas on what Vidal should do to protect himself from particulate matter while cycling, please join the conversation in the comments section and we will be back soon with episode 5 of Basic Hill.